Chapter 18. Love, Food for the Soul. After the prayer, Laura offered us an invigorating broth of fragrant fruits. The latter seemed concentrated with delicious fluids. I was obviously surprised, so Laura remarked graciously, Actually, our meals here are far more agreeable than they were on earth, and there are homes in Nasalar that dispense with them almost completely. But in the areas of the Ministry of Assistance, we cannot go without concentrated fluids due to the heavy tasks that the circumstances demand. We consume a great deal of energy, and we have to renew our sources of strength. Even so, remarked one of the young women, that doesn't mean that we who work for the Ministries of Assistance and Regeneration are the only ones who depend on food. None of the ministries, including Divine Union, dispense with it completely. The only difference in the food is the nature of its substance. In communication and elucidation, for example, they eat a huge amount of fruit. In elevation, they consume a lot of juices and concentrated fluids. In the Ministry of Divine Union, the forms of nutrition are beyond anything you could imagine. My inquiring look went first to Lysias and then to Laura, eager for an explanation. Everybody smiled at my natural perplexity, but Lysias' mother satisfied my wishes. Our brother may not realize that the greatest sustenance for all creatures is love. From time to time in Nasalar, we are visited by large delegations of instructors who teach the principles of spiritual nutrition. Every nutritional system in the different spheres of life is fundamentally based on love. Even here, physical alimentation, per se, is simply a problem of transitory materiality, like machines on the earth which need grease and oil. The soul, in and of itself, is nourished only by love. The more we ascend the evolutionary planes of creation, the more thoroughly we understand this truth. Didn't you know that divine love is the mainspring of the universe? Such elucidations comforted me considerably. Noticing my inner satisfaction, Lysias interrupted. Everything balances out in the infinite love of God. And the more evolved the created being, the subtler the process of nutrition. For instance, the worm under the soil feeds essentially on earth. The large animal finds the necessary elements for nourishment in plants. And the child sucks the maternal milk. Human beings gather the fruit of plants and prepare it for the table according to their tastes. We disincarnates need juicy substances that are fluidic in form, and this process becomes gradually more refined as our individual ascent intensifies. Let's not forget about love as the true vehicle of life, Laura added, for deep down worms, animals, human beings, and spirits depend exclusively on love. We all move about in it, and without it we wouldn't exist. That is extraordinary, I said, deeply moved. Don't you remember the gospel lesson that says, Love one another, continued Lysias' mother. Jesus didn't teach principles like that referring only to charitable giving, for all of us will learn sooner or later that the practice of the good consists in simple duty. Jesus also counsels us to sustain one another through fraternity and sympathy. Some day, incarnates will understand that friendly words, gestures of kindness, mutual trust in the light of understanding, and fraternal interest, all treasures that naturally originate in profound love, are the solid nourishment of life itself. When we reincarnate, we experience great limitations. But upon returning here, we realize that sustained joy is a question of pure spiritual nourishment. Homes, towns, cities, and nations are formed in obedience to such principles. I instinctively recalled the widespread theories about sex. Guessing my thoughts, Laura remarked, No one can say that sex is simply sex. Sex is a sacred manifestation of universal and divine love, but it is only one isolated expression of our infinite potential. 
among more spiritualized couples, tenderness and trust, mutual devotion and understanding are far more important than physical union, which between such partners is reduced to merely a transitory element. Their magnetic exchange is the factor that establishes the rhythm required for the manifestation of harmony. Companionship and understanding are sometimes quite enough for their mutual joy. Taking advantage of the pause that followed, Judita added, We have learned in Nasalar that life on earth is balanced on love, although most people never realize it. Twin souls, kindred souls, harmonious souls form pairs and large groups. By gathering together and mutually assisting one another, they balance one another in the plan of redemption. When weaker individuals lack such companions, however, they usually fail in the middle of their journey. As you can see, my friend, Lysias remarked happily, even here we remember the gospel of Christ. Man shall not live on bread alone. But before Lysias could say any more, the bell rang loudly. He got up to answer the door. Two polite young men came into the room. Lysias addressed me courteously. These are our brothers Polidoro and Estacio, fellow workers from the Ministry of Elucidation. Everyone happily greeted and embraced them. After a few moments, Laura said with a smile, You have all worked hard and spent the day worthily. Don't spoil your plans on account by canceling your trip to the field of music. Noticing Lysias's concern, his mother told him, Run along, my son. Don't keep Lacinia waiting. Our brother will stay with me until he can accompany you on such entertaining excursions. Don't worry about me, I said instinctively. Laura smiled and answered, I won't be able to share the joys of the field of music today. My convalescing granddaughter is here after having returned from Earth a few days ago. They all left in the midst of overall joy. Laura closed the door and turned to me to explain with a smile, They are going in search of the food we've been talking about. The ties of affection are stronger and more beautiful here. Love, my friend, is the divine bread of souls the sublime sustenance of hearts.